Toronto. Now, Larry Pesavento. I always miss this. I always get that introduction wrong because there's an extra bit to it, a little coda to it. Folks, Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento, and I hunted around the house again today trying to find those huge shoes to fit. But it's going to be tough. Larry's out there. In fact, he's posted some great charts to the to the den, and uh, he's just got a little problem with his voice. So I'm I'm kind of subbing in here for him. Dow's down 54 at 13,224. The S&P is right now at uh, 13.98. Uh, down 755. Comp index is now down three. It was down 12 before. Now it's down three. Uh, Qs are actually holding very, very well. And um, the and gold is down 11 at 1651. In my show just a short while ago, I went through with John and Philly. Went through all the different gold charts. I was anticipating that the gold, some of the gold stocks could have a bounce here because they've just been beaten down. But I don't think the gold contract is ready for more than this bounce that we're seeing. Um, and I just got something here with the silver, and we can look at that in a little while. Now, there's something else that's also very important. Bonds are now only up 23, 30 seconds, and 142 and 26 seconds. And I've been talking about this. There's a trading range in bonds, and I'll get to all of that, but we do have a call online uh, right now. Let me just go to our caller, and we've got Jim in Boston. Hi, Jim. How are you? Jim in Hello, Boston. Boston. Uh, I'm a great fan. Uh, I, I've uh, met you a few times uh, in the Boston Meetup uh, meetings, and uh, and I've got a question concerning your technique as it applies to the indices, the, the equity indices, um, and uh, their corresponding uh, future contracts. Okay, recently, great. Recently, we, we've had uh, a, a situation where there's, uh, I'm going to use the word bifurcation, but the, there's a lack of synchronization between the peaks. Um, on the various indices. Yeah, and, let me just, um, just uh, John, just Jim, Jim. not not the peaks themselves, because the IWM did go to a leg. Dean is making a peak. D. It looks like this morning. The Qs are the ones that are lagging, but the, the Dow, the Dow has been the stronger so far. I had an email from someone just a short while ago saying, and and he's absolutely correct. William says, um, I, ba- "Hi, Basil. The IWM is the strongest U.S. market index from the lowest established in uh, in April of 2012. However." The Dow is the strongest U.S. market index from this, the peak established on April the 2nd uh, of this year. So, yeah. So, the, so what we're looking at, in ter- I just wanted to clarify that the peaks themselves might correspond, but the price, the Dow is stronger. The others have failed to break to new recovery highs. Continue. Yes. Oh, yes, very, very good. So, so, so uh, the nature of the question is something I heard in one of the presentations you made, is, is that the largest pullbacks, the, uh, the largest corrections, come come at moments when all of the indices are synchronized in peaks, and they're not in price and leadership in terms of time, if you will, but, but in terms of peaks, when if they all may, seem to maybe making a, a peak D at the same time, then right. you, get the, you get the strongest pullbacks. Uh, now is, uh, did, 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 do I remember that correctly? Okay. This is the rule. Actually, the, this the Chapman Wave song. It's buy at the low and sell at the high, which you might also mm-hmm, remember. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. says the market goes up, the market goes down. Yes. You're supposed to buy at the low and sell at the high. But you know what we tend to do? We buy at the high and we sell at the low. The Chapman Wave is what you need. You buy with the stoke. That's the slow stochastic and the old man. Actually, you're really looking at chart formations as well. It doesn't have to be. Those are addendums to the technique itself using technical indicators. You follow the price and you wait for peak, higher highs is what you seek. Then the wave goes to A and then to B. Even the anticipated C and D. Now I answer your question because it says, that's when it flashes a cautionary light, but all you got to do is make your stops real tight. That's the issue. Suddenly it goes to E and F. Now that's happened with a number of these charts. It's gone to an E and F or it's even recycled in that, ind- in that indicator that I've developed, which is, you remember the instant restart, which is a very powerful indicator because it says if you get an instant restart, you can get an entirely new four peaks to the high that keeps you in the trade even longer so yeah. uh, so that's when it gets to peak f is when i'm really cautious and that that answers your question in terms of 
the technique involved. Now, when you get a unison technique, uh, a unison thing like the the Dow. Let me just do this for as you're talking. You you'll be able to to follow it. The Dow is made of peak D if it doesn't go above 1338 today. But the MACD and the stochastic are really strong. It's way above the 13,160 nine period exponential moving average. I don't actually have a sell signal in place just yet. I might have a peak D. That's when I'm being a little bit cautious, but I don't have the sell signal, even though the 120 minute chart did go to a peak E and is pulling back quite sharply, but it did not break the lows of yesterday. Days young. Now look at the S&P. This is to answer your question again. The S&P, the Dow went to 13,300, above the 12,990 high of last, the last peak. The S&P failed to get above 14,222.38. It's lower at peak D at 1415.32, number one. Number two is stochastic still at 84% and it held the nine period moving average so far today at 1394. That's good. The weekly chart looks to me like it still wants to make a peak D, and the Dow is actually in leg E to the upside, while the S&P hasn't yet made D, which is 1422.39, one penny above the previous high, starts D. Now, if you go to the Qs, the Qs have had the best rally, but since April the 10th, I think the day, um, April the 3rd, it's been pulling back. It went down to the low of, of 65.24 on the 13th. Now it's run up. It's only a leg B, but it's holding the nine period moving average and the stochastics at 80% of the MACD is trying to rally. So it's kind of weak. It's one of the weaker ones that I've discussed so far, but if you look at the weekly chart, their weekly chart is still very strong, even though the MACD is turning down the stochastics at 79%. The price is above. 66.07 and the monthly chart has a spe spectacular up channel going right to the resistance area and then the final one is the IWM which started its decline at 84.66 way earlier back in uh, March 27th plunged down to 78.14 retested with a higher low of 78.31 went to a D yesterday pull back and now is holding the, the support of the up channel. Its weekly chart doesn't look anywhere as strong as the others. Mm -hmm. That's that summarizes it. Now, did you want to uh, relate so, this so, to, so, to the so, futures? Uh, the, the nature of the question is 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 if you if you look at the corresponding uh, futures uh, uh, contracts, the E minis for those for those particular say the uh, S and P and and the Dow. Yeah. Uh, you, you've no, you've noticed that the peaks aren't corresponding to the indices themselves. So ah, but you know why, right? Larger. Now, does that tell us anything? In yes, it tells you. It tells you that you trade overnight, and because you're trading and overnight, it. and that's it. Uh, well, you, you can any. You know. <laughs> It's a really good question. Boy, I think if, if Larry yeah. has the voice for it, he is just the perfect person to talk about this. What I would say to you is that the E-minis made a high on the 27th, and the S&P made a high on the 20... On the 2nd of, of April. So be, it made that peak C on the 27th, but the E-minis trade overnight. And if I remember correctly, there was that Sunday night that they traded higher, which sure, didn't sure. show up. You see, okay. so... I, 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 I'm more or less talking theory here, though. And so you, you, you haven't uh, sort of come to any, any... You haven't made any connection, any conclusion there uh, about, that, about sort of the behavior about, you know, which, which one leads in terms of peaks. It, oh, it that's your question. Information. No, okay. Let me answer your question very specifically. As far as leading is concerned, because the futures trade, other than the weekend, they're trading almost 24 hours a day. They mm -hmm. have to be leading because they can get the entire overnight session. You can get six, eight hours of overnight, mm. which is yeah. like another day. And right. you can make highs and lows in the futures, which will not be re represented uh, at 9.30 to 4 o'clock or 4.15 uh, in, uh, in the indexes themselves, which only trade, well, I only follow them on a price basis from 9.30 sure. to 4. Well, we might, so, we might talk about some other derivative, like the, uh, the SPY. It, it, it's, a, it's a derivative of, of the index itself. And, uh, and, uh, and it also has these characteristics of being able to be 
you know, uh, in peak E while the... Yeah, that's a fabulous... Is, you know, that's, that's a great question. There's a technique that I haven't had to use for a long time, but I used to get, and I discussed it on air, there was a period in my Chapman Wave stalk leg formation where in the neck, when it breaks out of the oval and goes to peak D or whatever it is, I had a technique that said the Dow will not, or the S&P will not make it a leg D. It'll fail at C or C1, C2, a double top. But that is a sell signal that I've got to take it. The one will give it and the one other one won't. So that goes exactly to your point. And I use, if you notice, I use the waveform on each one absolutely independently. Ah, yeah. And, okay. You see? So that way, you absolutely... So, so I think there that, is information there. There is absolute uh, information, uh, and that's uh, because uh, they don't uh, trade... I mean, I absolutely trust your method. I, I, you, know, I, I, you, know, I, you know, of course, it's all probabilistic, but... but, but uh, yeah, I'm a believer, if you will, and so if given that, I, I, I believe there is information there. Uh, there absolutely is, and you know what? It's it's an amazing thing. <coughs> I don't know how it does it because my 120 minute chart is actually an inaccurate 120 minute chart, and I've used it this way for 17 years at least. It's actually a 30. Sometimes it's, it's well between. The, is it the 9.30 to 10 o'clock? I think 9.30 to 10 or 4 to 4.30. I don't remember which one. Gives me a half a, half an hour. It's, I mean, any statistician, statistician would say, you cannot use a technique like that. There's no way. I mean, you've got mm-hmm. improbables because you've got an imbalance between your 120-minute your chart. Well, you know what? I've used it, and it's given fantastic signals. Look at this morning's signal at peak E. And you came down, and now you're trying to rally again. The SPY has done the same thing. It went to a peak, uh, unusual peak G, pulled back, trying to rally again. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> it, seems to, it seems to give the correct readings. I, as a human being, sometimes misinterpret them. That's different. But the right. actual but technique itself, I love. So, 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 so I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure why that is either. Why you can use a 120 minute chart and use that in, and there's a smaller section of time at the end. But as a mathematician, but in support of what you do, um, you know, Hurst, who was a cycle guy, um, uh, believed believed the cycles existed outside of market hours, um, and and uh, and uh, in 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 that technique, what you're doing is that you're just taking merely you're taking a sample of something that would that would uh, that would exist in that hour, and then you'd have a zero ho- order hold, if you will, in in a, in a sampling sense over the over the next. So there, so, so you know, if you if you're a believer in Hearst models and uh, well, I know that Larry had done a lot of work. I believe so with Hearst. In fact, I sent him an article by Hearst. I had read something uh, quite quite a bit actually about. Uh, there was a very good article in the. Um, in the Stocks and Commodities magazine on Hearst. And, uh, but uh, they also said it's, it, he's got thousands of pages for some of his conclusions. Um, <laughs> that takes a little bit of work. So right, thank right, you so right. much for calling, well, thank Jim. You, thank you. Thank you so much. Right. And uh, very good observations. Thank you. I thank you for bringing it up as well. Uh, folks, the Dow's now down only 32, S&P's down 496. I'm going to go on with the uh, what we trade what you see. I'm going to show you what I see. And hopefully Larry will be uh, even be able to give me a little bit of a call in and quite talk to me about something that I can mention on air. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of The Money Game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look, fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and The Money Game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex-listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold-silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than 250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has 50 million in its treasury, having spent over 60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year end, as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story gold mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pizzo Venture. Trade what you see, and you know what? We got a surprise right here. I believe Larry is right on the line. Hi, Larry. Hey, Basil. How are you today? Oh, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. How are you? Well, I'm, I'm imitating a frog. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all I wanted to mention is the uh, action in the market yesterday, uh, you know, happened on the, the last day of that cycle band that we had from the new moon on the 22nd to the 1st of uh, May. And, uh, you know, that was the anniversary date of last right. year's high and also May May the 2nd, right. And so as long as we don't go screaming up above 13,500 in the Dow and above 1428 in the S&P, we've got a chance for a down move to start. Uh, the other thing is, Basil, is the bonds are acting incredibly bullish. Uh, you know, they've been in this trading range for about seven months at a very high level. And uh, notes have made higher contract highs the last several days. And so I think we still got a chance for bonds to make above that 150 level without too much trouble. So, so the, the what you would be looking for in bonds, if they were to break, so it, uh, certainly if bonds break above the previous high of the 27th, above 143.18, that opens up each previous higher peak, which would be like the 144 level, going all the way back to 144 and 23 30 seconds in December. Yeah, I, I think if we get above 144, we're going to make at least 151. So, the corollary with that would be, if bonds move higher, money flows 
back into bonds coming out of stocks, you'd be looking for what level, say, on the NASDAQ or which, on the S&P, for, for I, a clue uh, to say that it's breaking down? Well, oh, the breakdown point in the S&P and anything that we look at is Monday's the 23rd's low. That was a very important cycle low. Uh, and it, it also was a new moon day. You know, in the new moon on bull markets, you buy on the new moon and sell on the full moon. And so that was a buy on the new moon. And it was pulling down into it with the Dow down 150. You know, and then it, of course, turned around later. But uh, that was. So if we take out that low, that would set up a, a real drastic case of left translation. In other words, a cycle high being made you know, just seven days later on the first, you know, so that's the way I look at it, if, if it's correct. So, um, to, to go with that, do you, would you then be looking at, for instance, I had been mentioning on, on, when I did your show the other day, and also for my subscribers, that the dollar was coming in to retest the law of 78, the index, 78.66, the law of the 3rd of April, it had made this arch formation, but my target had been a test of the 200 period moving average, which I know you don't use this, the 200 EMA, which was at 78.58, and yesterday it went right down to 78.60 and has had a, had a strong bounce. Would you think then that the dollar would, would be moving higher? You know, I don't really care, by, um, uh, Basil. I mean, I'm, I look at each one separately. And, you know, if I try to make correlations like that, I get confused. So if I look okay. at one chart, that's all I try to do. By the way, it was a full moon coming in on uh, on May the uh, May 6th uh, that we have our full moon coming in. So uh, if that's the case, you know, we, we should have we should have made a turn yesterday, given the market action. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. So, okay, so you're looking at each one independently, and what you're looking at at this particular point is that in terms of cycle dates, so yes. far we've not, other than the Dow, none of the indices have gone above their previous highs. This not, is the even most recent highs. not even close. And the, the NYA, in fact, uh, has also made that leg D that I was talking about, probably a peak D, but its high yesterday was 82.11, and the previous high back on the 19th of March was 83.27. Yeah, that's what it looks like anyway. Anyway, Good. this is about all I could give, my friend. Thank you for setting in for me. Oh, it's my this. pleasure. Get well, Larry, and thank you so yeah. much. And everyone, right. everyone in the den is appreciating I, what you've done and showing yeah. those charts. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Get well, Larry. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Larry Pesventa calling into his show. I'm merely, I'm, uh, I'm merely a vessel for <laughs> expelling the information that he gave. Larry, I hope the voice gets better soon. You actually sounded well, other than the, the raspiness of your voice. So, uh, okay, now let's, let's do a couple of things. Because I, I too, like to look at, uh, that's what I was talking about with John in Philly. I like to look at these, even the gold relationship to the silver, relationship to the GDX, to the GLD, each one I like to look at separately because they're each doing different different things. We've got a break coming up, 877-927-6648. I'm going to go through the euro-dollar currency pair. I'm going to go through the dollar. I'm going to go through some of the other. Uh, I won't be able to help out if Larry's not able to do the show tomorrow. The commodities are just I'm unavailable. But I'll go through some of those commodities uh, in preparation. So Basil Chapman, love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. Dow's down only 25. S&P's down 4. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations, including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when temporary market spikes move against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the advantage of keeping your trades open even when the market temporarily spikes against you. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique short-term binary options that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Presavento. Trade what you see. I just want to quickly show something here, and then we're going to go to our next caller. There's a Chapman flat base start in HLF. Herbalife Limited went to a peak T, went to a peak G slash C in the monthly chart, gave a beautiful cup for... Um, Cup retest of the previous high of 72.11, 72.11, with the next day being 72 round number high. It makes an all-time high of 73. This will be one of the best stocks in the stock market since 2009, going from about uh, uh, six dollars and six cents to the round number 73 high. Believe me, you want to look at round numbers. You remember Apple's 644 round number? I've written a whole bunch of stocks that are making round number highs with major declines un uh, unfolding. Let's go to Mike in New York. Hi, Mike. How are you? Great, Basil. Um, could you look at the FXI and the, chi uh, the, the, the Chinese uh, stock market? Um, okay. F so, folks, what we're looking at, we're looking at the iShares of the FTSE China 25. It used to be called the Xinhua uh, Index. Now they've taken that away, and it's called the iShares FTSE China 25. Now, this is really interesting because on a daily chart, that 200-period exponential moving average, which had been absolutely like a sine wave, it traded under it, then it went over it, made a double top. Gee, just like that stock we were looking at, the Herbalife, a few minutes ago. Double top from the... Uh, to th 3rd of March, no, 3rd of February at 40.67, comes back down, has another quick ABCD uh, to the higher 40.74. Oh, I forgot to mention our caller, the, uh, uh, 
Jim. Uh, Jim, I uh, probably we're just setting it up now. I'm almost certain I'll be speaking at the Boston uh, Investors Group uh, this coming Tuesday evening over at MIT. Um, almost uh, just just happened to coincide right now. So that, I'll be confirming that, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work out. So now what we've done is we've double topped uh, in the FXI. At on the 29th of February at 40.74, and then that drop bucket, that that double top formation, takes it all the way down below the previous cup low, which was 38.66. That says you can get a, a one to one decline. Well, you've got more than a one de one decline. You 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 now in a case like this, folks, we skip the gaps. Gaps on any foreign trading stock are automatic because they they're busy trading overseas. And then they open up here, or there's, there's buying pressure from overseas. So there are always gaps. So we don't care about gaps like that. The queues, I want to just mention this, I think is very important. The queues made a major, oh boy, a uh, major gap, an island reversal gap from the other day, uh, both on the, on the 23rd of April and the 24th. That's a huge island gap. It's actually a very positive thing. And you almost had an, a, a volume spike, a climax volume spike reversal. So that to me is important. Now let's go back to what we're looking at. Just I like to uh, I like to relate chart patterns. This is what it's all about. Trade what you see. Now we're going to go to the FXI and say, hey, wait a minute. All this bad news about China, it's now testing the 200 period moving average once again in leg C, probably peak C, and it looks like it should make a D because it's an 82% in the stochastic, you see, this is one of the reasons, Mike, why listening to the news can really disturb your train of thought. You know, I just heard the other day, China's slowing down, China's not good, this is going to be a very, they, 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 they're having a, a real tough time, and yet the chart is saying, at least for the past, since October, there's been a rally from 28.61 to the recent peak E top at that 40.74 higher in March, beginning of March. And now it's trying to turn the 200 period moving average not into a repellent line if it's able to close above 39.13, close that is on a Friday, any Friday, that's going to be very good action. Are you in this trade or you just, is this a general question? No, this is a general question. Uh, so then let so then let's put this together here with what I'm looking at longer term because the weekly chart says, yeah, it's in a trading band starting to make higher highs, higher lows. That's a, that's a good sign. But it did make a serious peak E top held way above the previous low of 33.54 back in December. That's a good sign. Stochastic is is rallying. It's at 43%. It is rallying, but it's not good. The MACD is flattening out. And that says, okay. That's important, but you've got to see that fast moving average cross to the upside and it won't do that unless thirty eight oh I'd say even thirty nine ten is hit. When it does that, you'll see that uh, MACD improve. Now let's look at the monthly chart. The monthly chart went from a trough when it IPO'd, that's the only way I can do it for at sixteen fifty two back in October of two thousand and four. It went to six higher peaks to a high of seventy two twenty six and I remember this well. Because I had a little trouble uh, uh, trying to pronounce it, and, and a, a, a young man from uh, China sent me a beautiful email saying, thank you very much, I listen to you all the time, and the way we pronounce X-I-N-H-U-A, that's what it was called, is Xinhua, I believe that's correct, so that... Because so many people had trouble, but they must have listened to me on the radio and said, gee, he's having trouble. We're going to change it to the iShares FTSE China 25 index. Now look what's happened. You see it made from the 19.35, a 73% decline to the October 2008 low. It went to 47.99, just missed the 48 round number. In peak C, its pullback is having another, a buy, it's attempting a buy mode Within the previous buy mode, it's held the, the, the trend line support. It held exactly the two. Look how important the 200 period moving average is. It was fantastic support all the way through 2008 and 2009. It just touched it at 28.61 in October of last year, right on the line. It's bounced off. What has to happen is that China cannot make another arch formation. Well, it can make an arch formation, certainly. But it, it must not fail 
this FXI, which is a 3821, if it starts in the next two weeks, maybe because of our market, maybe not, maybe independently, but if it takes out, if it closes under 35, 55 is the low of April, if it closes under 3530, then there's a real good chance it's going to retest the 200 period exponential moving average. If in the next two to three weeks, somehow or other, it's able to get into that ugly candle of uh, March of this year, and it can get anywhere into the 38.58. That's, gee, it's only 35 cents. 38.58 to 38.90 area. I would say that that's good action because it's going back to holding the nine period exponential moving average. And then it has to rally over the, into the summer towards the thir, uh, 40, it actually has to get into the 43s, 43 to 44 area to even be able to make another arch to show it has the capacity or the strength to make a higher high above 47.99 for peak D. So, so far my parameters, let me just go through this real clearly. In the next two weeks, on, uh, uh, um, yeah, in the next two weeks, if it closes under 37, sorry, no, 30. Oh, I have to go back to the weekly chart. Here we go. There we are. If it cannot push above 38.76, that's the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart, but instead it's repelled and it gets back into about the 37.20 or lower area, I'd say, you know what, that's not good strength at all and it's probably going to fail because the stochastic and MACD will be very bad. If in the next five sessions it's able to climb above 38.80, and then on a weekly basis, either this Friday or the next Friday, close above 38.80, I would say that that's very nice action. It's not great action. Great action would be up in the 39.80 to 40 area. But that's a start. So I hope that helps you. But so far on the daily basis, it's walking the nine period moving average. It looks good. MACD's good. Stochastic's good. I suspect it's going to make a leg D up above 38.58. Hope that right. helps you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's Mike in New York. Now, a couple of things I wanted to do. Here we go. Stand back. LHM. LHM 12. That is lumber? Is that lumber? Yeah, lumber. You remember on Monday I said mon lumber? No, lean hogs. <laughs> you got to remember what these symbols are. Lean hogs. June contract. I said it looks terrible. And um, right now it's at 84.75 down ten, And the nine period moving average is at 86.75. And it's strong. It it just hasn't even t it hasn't even had a bounce, so this is not good. And what I'd said is, if I look at LH. Dot P in my uh, continuous contract, that there was an M-shaped pattern. The H, the dreaded H, turns into an M, and there was a real good chance I'd said that if it closes, I think I said under 86. If it closes under 86, is 84, 70, 84, 70. 75 right now there's a good chance it could even retest the low of 82 the 7877 low August of 2009 in this particular pattern you got to really be careful there so that's lean hog sorry folks if there was lumber lumber are we going to get to CTN I think is cotton CTN Cotton is making these M-shaped patterns. The most important thing right now is that cotton at 88.86, this is the which contract? Uh, this is the July contract. It really looks like it's going to retest the 87.88 200 period exponential moving average. If it does that and breaks it, then the low of 86.55, um, April, the week of April the 20th, that'll be the target. If in the next three days it's able to get above 90.53, the nine period exponential moving average, that would help the stochastic, that would help the MACD, and it'll even help you because it could be making a cup formation. So those are the two levels I'd be watching. I don't trade it, so I can only tell you that those are the levels that I'd be watching. Now we've got a question about, uh, I think someone asked me about silver. Uh, and Larry had a, a buy, I believe, this morning. Uh, he had a 20, cents, a 20 cent stop on it. I'm looking at silver. I'm looking at the, I don't know if the, you're trading the July contract, but the July contract says that it is, it is holding. My 120 minute chart is, is, is acting quite well. But all I can say is that with a flat stochastic at 12%, if, if, unless silver, July silver, can close above 30.70, it's at 30.615 right now, 
and hold ab above that for maybe two out of three sessions uh, and with a stochastic going from 12% to at least 16% I, I would think that it's going to retest the low um, the low of 30.410 so I, I, I'm not sure whether, whether that takes out the stop or not but that, that's just what I'm looking at right now only because the nine period moving average is just so powerful in the daily um, and also in, in the 120 minute chart that it really needs to do that and it needs to do it by this afternoon or uh, tomorrow morning. So I wanted to do that and then we went to gold and everything earlier on. CLM, let's look at CLM, that's crude oil. Crude oil is ABC. This is, I don't think this is the contract people trade. CLN maybe, CLN. Oh, I haven't done work on this either. All right, well, whichever contract, the July, I'm looking at the July contract. Ah, CLK. I don't know if anybody's trading the April. The April contract, I've done quite a bit of work on. And that shows in the, in the weekly chart, we've made a peak C. We failed to make the cup right side test. We've run out of time. So I have to look at crude oil and say, okay, crude oil, if you're going to sustain this rally, you cannot close below, it's at 103.61, you, you close below 99.50 and that says that you've made a little arch formation and you're probably going to have to retest um, 96.26. That means in the next two days, if, you're, if crude oil is able to get into the 106, really isn't, it sounds like a lot, but it shouldn't be for crude oil, it's at 103.61. If crude oil is able to get to 106.24, That'll say, great, now you've made a little arch formation and that could extend out so that you could try to make leg D above 110.95. Those are the levels. I'm looking at this almost the same way as I'm looking at the Dow chart. When I look at the Dow, which has the same cup formation, and that cup formation made an exact 16 bars to the downside, 15 bars to the upside, breaking above. Uh, the previous high, that's a good sign, but what's very important is if there's going to be the pattern that I call the chap wave, oh, it's M, I'll go to the M in a moment, that's, thanks Dan, uh, Danny and the Dan, um, that's for crude oil. If the Dow is able to break by tomorrow into the 13,300s again, it's at 13,250, that would say you could get a potential cup, a chap wave cup and ladle formation, but if it fails, it could make the cup and handles one of my least favorites. That'll make four tests of the top. That's really tough to break out. And if it certainly breaks today's low of 13,192, if it goes to 13,000, uh, 13,180s, that's just not good action at all after what we've been through. And that's just consolidation unfolding. And there is, in any case, a rotational consolidation. So it's a CLM. Uh, I haven't done the notation. Oh, I have. Good. I was ready for anything. So that crude oil uh, fa failed to make the peak above the right, left side high of 113.99 back on the 6th of May. So that says, be careful, but there's a chance that now you can make the, the cup right like that, and you can have a rally. And the parameters are, so this is for the M contract trading at 105.41. It needs to clear... It needs to clear 108.22, the high of the 30th of March. The moment it does that, I say, great. Now I can make leg D above 111.30 in the uh, daily chart. Now let's go to something else I want to look at. Oh, natural gas. You remember on Monday, I said natural gas looks really good. It's breaking out. The natural gas contract did, in fact, go to leg B. It's going to be peak B today. There's no new high above yesterday's high. Missed it by 0.001. I'll be back. Basel Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento. 877-927-6648. What you think about, you bring about. What you focus on grows. If you're committed to becoming an extraordinary trader and investor, then make mastery your outcome. Yes, my best student, Steve Rhodes, became my best teacher. But even more important is what he's taught me, and the time is now for you to take advantage of his knowledge. Thanks, Tom. I've learned that it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but what we do consistently. I want to teach you the consistency that exists in the stock, futures, forex, and commodity markets day in, day out. For one solid day, Friday, May 18th, I'm going to conduct an online master trader course that will teach you how to buy and sell the D-point. This one pattern alone with the single best entry and exit technique
weeks when combined with my money management strategies will create extraordinary rewards for you and your family. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you'd like and it'll teach you to become a master. All the details are on the homepage at TFNN.com. Sign up today because mastery is one click away. It's your decisions, not your conditions that determine your destiny. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pizzavent, the final segment of the show. And uh, we've got Ben in Tallahassee. Hi, Ben. How are you? Good, Basil. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Yeah, I know we got just a minute here, so we'll try to make this quick. I've um, been listening to your session and now Larry's session, um, and knowing that we're at critical... Uh, uh, peaks in the Chapman wave on both a monthly and daily, it sounds like you're more convinced or biased toward a consolidation versus a pullback. Is that is that accurate? So I, let me just be very specific. I do not have a signal yet in okay. my in my Dow chart, my daily chart, that um, that this peak D should be anything more than just a bit of a pullback, number one. Number two is my weekly chart so far in leg E is holding very well, but it's actually, uh, I need this leg E to be much stronger. I need to see 13,450, 13,550 to say, wow, now the technicals have improved. My monthly charts so far are say, showing no signals whatsoever as to the downside. Of course, that can only happen 
if the daily starts to really tank and goes below 12,900, then the, the weekly will start to fail badly and technically, and then you will start to see the uh, monthly chart deteriorate. But at this point, I don't have it. And if I, I, would, I just took a look a moment ago at the semiconductor index, the SMHs, and they they good clues as to what's going on. They're up 13 cents at 34.87, and it's in leg B, and it looks like it might either extend leg B, but it should even go to leg C, and that's without the stochastic being at 80 percent, is at 72. Hmm. Point forty, so that's giving us a bit of room. If it breaks out of this pattern I call the falling axe, those lower highs and lower lows, a declining cone, that's going to be very important. And what's so fascinating is I have a very good friend who's in the semiconductor business, and he goes to all the conferences around the world. He says everybody's so pessimistic, and I said to him, I said, you know. I don't use you at all because I look at the chart and I've noticed that you can be pessimistic and it can go up. You can suddenly get very optimistic and it goes down. So I have to look just at the chart and the chart right now is saying, hey, SMHs are holding well. That's a part. I mean, that's kind of a good clue because that's got Intel, big, a big percentage in the, in the Dow. I like what I'm seeing at this particular point. I won't like it if the price deteriorates with the technicals and I see a slide uh, certainly under 13,000 in the next few days, I'll say, whoops, the rotational correction isn't just going sector sector, stock by stock, it's now taking everything down. But so far, I, so far, I just don't see it. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, now remember that Larry looks at cycle work, and he's, he's very strict on that. This is the time period. This is what's going to happen. So he looks at it in a little bit of a different way because he looks at it as a risk-reward, just another technical indicator giving risk-reward. And if it works, it's great risk-reward. And if it doesn't work, he's always got a very tight stop to say, okay, Oh, he's got to stop to say, okay, it didn't work that time. So cycle dates are very important, and when they work, they're spectacular. And, of course, when they fail, you also have to say, whoops, didn't work that time. So I hope that helps you. Thank you very much for calling. So it's Ben in Tallahassee. Now, let, let, folks, let me just do something else here. The, this is another reason why I just, at this point, I just can't get too bearish. The HGX, this is the housing sector index, has broken the down, there's this falling, uh, falling axis, declining wedge formation in the weekly chart. It's the most spectacular single leg A up uh, in the monthly chart. It's going right to the 200 period moving average. Third time it's trying to test it in three months. It, uh, since it broke down back in February of 2008, this is the first time it's even hitting that level. So that's going to be important as well. The, the home builders are looking great and the ITB construction has also gone extended higher. Folks, thank you very much. Sitting here for Larry Pez Event. I'll be back on Friday for my regular show, the Tiger Technicians Hour. Go to the front page, check out my opening call and thanks for being here.